Asbestos or asbestos or الحرير الصخري is the third mineral dust associated with pneumoconiosis. Asbestos is a family of crystalline hydrated silicates with a fibrous geometry. Asbestos is one of the mineral dust that can cause pneumoconiosis. Other common mineral dusts as we discussed before are the coal dust and silica. Usually the exposure happens in workplace. This is true except for the asbestos. As with this mineral, the increased risk for cancer extends to the family members of the asbestos workers and also to the individuals exposed to the asbestos outside the workplace. So the risk of asbestos is increased in any patient who is exposed to the asbestos in workplace or outside the workplace and also to the family members of the asbestos workers. Furthermore, studies showed an increased incidence of asbestos-related cancers in family members of asbestos workers. On the basis of epidemiologic studies, occupational exposure to asbestos is linked to parenchymal interstitial fibrosis, which is called asbestosis, localized fibrous plaques or rarely diffuse fibrosis in the pleura, pleural effusions, lung carcinoma, malignant pleural and peritoneal mesothelioma, and laryngeal carcinoma. Let's talk about the pathogenesis. As with the silica crystals, the pulmonary macrophage is the key cellular element in inflammation, lung injury, and fibrosis. Following phagocytosis by macrophages, Many particles activate the inflammasome. This will induce the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin-1 and the release of other factors. This will initiate an inflammatory response. That leads to fibroblast proliferation and collagen deposition. Furthermore, the oncogenic effects of the reactive free radicals generated by the asbestos fibers on the mesothelium act as a tumor initiator and promoter. Why the mesothelium? Because asbestos fibers are usually localized in the distal lung close to the mesothelial layer. The relationship between asbestos and tobacco is interesting. In general, the adsorption of potentially toxic chemicals into the asbestos fibers increases its pathogenicity. And as we all know, tobacco smoking is considered number one risk factor for the development of lung cancer on one hand, and on the other hand, and as I mentioned in the previous slides, asbestos occupational exposure is linked to the development of lung cancer too. But what will happen when the patient have both? I mean when the patient is a tobacco smoker and has an occupational exposure to asbestos. When the patient is a tobacco smoker and has an occupational exposure to asbestos, the risk exceeds the sum of each factor alone. So the adsorption of carcinogens in the tobacco smoke into the asbestos fibers is the basis for the remarkable synergy between tobacco smoking and the development of lung carcinoma in asbestos workers. And in general, tobacco smoking worsens the effect of all inhaled mineral dusts and especially the asbestos. Let's start discussing the main morphologic or microscopic and macroscopic features of asbestosis. This figure shows the first characteristic feature of asbestosis. The tissue section in this figure is stained by trichrome stain. This stain highlights collagen in blue, so all the blue areas of the interstitium are expanded and distorted by fibroplastic proliferation and collagen deposition, which is called pulmonary interstitial fibrosis. The extent of fibrosis determines the severity of the disease. This is marked by progressively worsening dyspnea clinically. So the first characteristic feature is the presence of diffuse pulmonary interstitial fibrosis.
Another characteristic feature is the presence of asbestos bodies, which are golden brown, fusiform or beaded rods with a translucent center. As you can appreciate at the center of this figure, there is a golden brown beaded rod with a translucent center. This is called asbestos body. The most common manifestation of asbestos exposure is the pleural plaques. The white arrows points to the tan white multiple pleural plaques on the pleural aspects of the diaphragm. These plaques develop most frequently on the anterior and posterior lateral aspects of the parietal pleura and over the dome of the diaphragm. This figure shows the histologic appearance of the pleural plaques. As you can appreciate, pleural plaques are made of dense laminated layers of collagen. This figure shows the gross appearance of two important findings. The yellow arrows point to the markedly thickened area of the visceral pleura, covering the lateral and the diaphragmatic surface of the lung. The area under the red star show severe interstitial fibrosis affecting the lower lobe. As I said, asbestosis is characterized by diffuse pulmonary interstitial fibrosis, which is usually patchy in distribution, associated with fibroplastic foci and the formation of cystic spaces, a pattern that is known histologically as usual interstitial pneumonia. So diffuse pulmonary interstitial fibrosis related to asbestosis is similar to the one seen in the usual interstitial pneumonia. Asbestos bodies, on the other hand, consist of asbestos fibers coated with an iron-containing proteinaceous material. Asbestos bodies are formed from when the macrophages try to phagocytose asbestos fibers. The iron coat or the outer crust is derived from the phagocyte ferritin. Asbestosis begins in the lower lobes and suprapleurally, spreading to the middle and the upper lobes of the lungs as the fibrosis progresses. طبعاً هذا عكس اللي بيصير في السيليكوسيس and the cold worker pneumoconiosis. As we say, the pleural plaques are the most common manifestation of asbestos exposure and they are characterized by well-circumscribed plaques of dense collagen, often containing calcium. They develop most frequently on the anterior and posterior lateral aspects of the parietal pleura and over the domes of the diaphragm. The clinical findings in asbestosis are similar to those related to other chronic interstitial lung diseases. Progressively worsening dyspnea appears 10 to 20 years after exposure. It's usually associated with cough and the production of sputum. The course of the disease is variable, so it may remain static in some patients or progress to congestive heart failure, core pulmonary, or even death. Pleural plaques are usually asymptomatic and detected on radiographs as circumscribed densities. Regarding the outcomes, both lung carcinoma and malignant mesothelioma can develop in workers exposed to asbestos. The risk for developing lung carcinoma is increased about five folds for asbestos workers, while the relative risk for mesothelioma, which is a very rare tumor, is more than a thousand times greater. Furthermore, the risk for lung carcinoma is greatly increased in patients who are tobacco smokers and exposed to asbestos. But tobacco smoking does not increase the risk for, the, for mesothelioma in asbestos workers. So although smoking increases your risk for developing asbestos-related lung carcinoma, it does not appear to increase your risk for mesothelioma. Because mesothelioma development is highly related to the asbestos exposure, not to the tobacco smoking. So tobacco smoking does not increase the risk for mesothelioma, 
However, as it does with all other respiratory diseases, tobacco smoking worsens the symptoms of mesothelioma and reduces the body ability to heal. In general, lung or pleural cancer associated with asbestos exposure carries a particularly poor prognosis.